right, hello everybody. How's everybody doing? I hope all's good. And today we'll be performing a project, a very simple one, but simultaneously we'll also be learning. So this is about web scraping in Python, where you get to use a various uh, modules such as Beautiful Soup, one of the simplest web scraping modules available. Also, we have used requests before, if I'm not wrong. So we pip install beautiful soup requests and HTML5 library. Okay, I'll be listing them down below in the description. So just go and check them out if you're confused. Also, you can see it on the screen right now. So just take a note. Now let's get started. We have to firstly import BS4 requests and from BS4, we import beautiful soup. All right. And now, uh, I hope this is big enough. All right. Now you have, firstly, let's go to this finance Yahoo. Okay. This is basically Yahoo finance where you get to see various talk exchange rates. And this is our topic for today. Web scraping stock prices using Python, using beautiful soup. As you can see, I've opened up the stock prices of Facebook, which reads 284.79. And it's at a, it was at a close at, on 23rd October. Basically, let this is just a trial error just to make you learn about web scraping if you're new to it. And also through an interesting aspect. What we need out of from this entire site is basically this value out here, right? Now, how do we get it? Are you familiar with HTML? Maybe at least a little bit of it. And maybe you have an idea that websites are built. The very scratch idea of a website is lies on HTML. The very basic concepts. Well, that's we, what we are going to extract today. So how you can see the HTML code is right clicking on maybe whatever area of your choice on the screen. Let's say I want this and hence I click on this element and go to inspect. You can alternatively hit control shift I, which will bring you to the same page. Now, if you can see as I'm scrolling over these lines of code, certain places out here get highlighted, right? So let's look at what we want. Now you see this div class that reads my six PX posts are okay. Very weird, but still that's what we are looking for. Because as you can see, this simultaneously gets highlighted on the left. We need those values. Now let's actually dive into our code. Firstly, obviously we need to give the site of from where we want to scrape the data. So it'll be the first request library being put into use. So we say request.get and we give in the URL of whichever site we want to scrape. So basically I'm uh, scraping the stock prices of two companies that is Facebook and Google. Next, that being done, let's see how we can actually Take the data. Now we just requested it. Now we need to extract the data, right? So again, into a variable, what I'm doing is say bs4.beautifulsoup and to that, see this request variable that you just entered. You need all the text from that site or from that page precisely. So you say URL of facebook.txt and next you need to pass in the parser using maybe XML or in my case, I'm using HTML. Now you might wonder what is HTML5 li library? That's the most recent one, most recent version of HTML, right? And if you don't give five library, it basically re says you get a warning, not an error, but a warning that says that it couldn't decide on which parser. So it chose a certain one. Okay, so just to be precise, I'm adding an HTML5 library. You do this for the Facebook data and also the Google data. This being done, let me just go ahead and comment this line and show you actually what amount of data gets extracted for you. Let's go ahead and print 
data FB. Okay, so basically the Facebook data. And this might take a while, but anyway, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so do you see this? These lines out here, the some script. You see all the HTML tags, script tags. This is basically a JavaScript code. And you have various fonts. There you go. You've got loads and loads of data. Now, what are we going to do with all of this? Right? This is not possible. There you go. This is the starting of any HTML uh, code. We need something very precise, right? So, remember the div that I just show, showed you all? The div, a certain div class. This is what we're going to extract now. Let's minimize this. And there you go. Let me comment this out now. You see this print statement. So we take the Facebook data and we apply the find all function, all possible divisions. Okay. Our first parameter will be what tag, HTML tag, do we want to find? Let's say a paragraph tag. Or in this case, we are finding the div tag. And there will be scores of div tags. You can see, you can find five, six at one glance itself. But we need a specific one, right? So we also mention the class. Just go ahead and copy this out, this class out here, as I have done. I'll be providing the links to it, so no issues. Also, you can just go and find out. That's not a big deal at all. So after saying the div, then the precise class, now, this is basically going to give you a huge list of items. But the first item will contain the price. Hence, we slice it to give us exactly the zeroth item. That is at the first position. And to that, we say, we say dot find. Okay. Basically, this is a span item. Now, if you're familiar with HTML, you'll understand as to why and what span is. So basically, you apply the span as to you find out which, how much is it spanning throughout. And you pass the only the first item. There's a difference between find all and find. Find all finds everything. Find only gets you the first one. So find of whatever is span, okay, that is another sort of HTML uh, keyword, let's imagine as that. And then you say dot text again, because we need all the text there. So data dot find all the URL, not the URL, sorry, the class, then extract the first element. And you say find of whatever in that specific span, the text format of it. You do the same thing for both Facebook and Google. Now, if you want oh, every, this is only give, going to give you one value, right? This isn't going to give you everything. So what if you needed all, all like each second updates? How would you do that? You would basically put that into an infinite loop. Now, here's the thing. If you are like, let's say you want to exit out of any infinite loop. What you do is simply say, control alt M. All right. Now, this is basically the value of uh, the stock price of Facebook. And this is the one for Google, right? Now let's go ahead and implement this into a GUI project. Very simple one. Now, if you've been following all of my previous projects, you will very well know how to implement Kinta. So all I've done is create some, uh, some windows, just a single window, some entry boxes or widgets. And that's basically it. You just get the data, put the data, delete it. You, we know all of this. And just to keep it running continuously, I've used the after method available from Kinter. All right, that's basically it. I'm going to go ahead and run this. You might, okay, again, just the, a disclaimer, this is all for your learning purpose. Values might not be exact. It all depends on the website, all right? And there you go. This is basically it. You give some headings. You say that it's collecting the data. And Facebook and Google have their respective stock prices. And that's all for using beautiful soup and web scraping in Python. I'll come up with some more relevant web scraping videos pretty soon. So stay tuned. Bye-bye.